Hello everyone, Simon Jacobson here, wishing you all a happy new year, a blessed year, a healthy year. We continue our special series by popular demand, Biblical Characters Decoded, and this week, Rachel, the Selfless Lover. This program is dedicated by Janine Lombroso. Thank you, Rabbi Jacobson, for your inspiration, and thank you. Love is probably the most used word in our lexicon. Billions and billions of results that you find on Google. But what exactly is love? And can we really capture it in a few minutes? But we have a character, a personality in the Bible, Rachel is her name, that teaches us something about love that is often... I would say underappreciated, overlooked, or worse. So here's the story. Jacob travels to the city of Haran. The Bible tells us to find a wife. His parents sent them there. That was the place where they had found their spouses, good material. And he falls in love. He falls in love with Rachel. But his devious and uh, criminal father-in-law, Laban, fools him. And he ends up sending someone else, his sister, her sister in place, Leah. But it was Rachel that he fell in love with. He did love Leah and married her faithfully. But he ends up also marrying uh, Rachel. But the tragic story of Rachel, several fold. Firstly, Leah was very fertile. She had many children with Jacob. For Rachel, it was very difficult to have children. She ended up having two children, Joseph and Benjamin. Rachel also dies early, in an untimely way. And as a result, Jacob, who loved her so dearly, has her buried, but not in the regular, usual burial plot which was in Hebron, the Marat HaMachpelah, a famous place where Adam and Eve are buried, where Abraham and Sarah, where Isaac and Rebekah, and where Jacob and Leah ultimately get buried. He buries Leah on the road, on the side of the road. Until this day, we have Keva Rachel, Rachel's burial plot, place, near the side of the road. And one of the reasons for it was as Jacob later explains to his son Joseph and Rachel's son, he says, before he passes away, Jacob tells Joseph in a very dramatic exchange, he says to Joseph, I ask you to please take me back to Israel once I pass away and bury me with my parents in Hebron. Now you may wonder, he says to Joseph, that I didn't do that dignity to your own mother. Why didn't I bury her in that holy place? I buried her on the side of the road. But you should know that's where your mother wanted to be. Because Rachel cries for her children. She wants to be on the road so when her children in the years to come will travel and be exiled after the first temple's destruction and then the second temple's destruction. This is the road out of Jerusalem that she will be right on the side of the road to cry with her children and cry for her children. So I actually did something your mother wanted. So even though her natural place would have been side by side with me, my beloved Rachel, that's where she's buried because she always wants to be with her children. Think about this. Talk about love. Love is being able to forego your own comforts for the good of another. That doesn't mean you always have to. God should bless us all that we should, be ble- we should be blessed with good lives and we don't have to have such sacrifice. But love is tested then and that's when you see true love. And who remains? The one that reminds us of what love is, it's Rachel. Even though all the matriarchs were loving people, each in their own way, including Leah. But Rachel stands out. The Kabbalists explain that Rachel's that level of malchus. And often... 
when we talk about the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, we then add Rachel as the fourth, the fourth leg of the chariot. Because she has that quality of selfless love, which is the quality of Malchut, dignity. The dignity of the princess is internal. Now today we hear about love, people write about it, sing about it, express it. I love you, I fell in love. It's a very expressive verb. But love is much more than a verb. Love is a noun. It's a state of being. And as a state of being, it's far more intimate and far less pronounced. It's like the foundation of a building. Foundation of a building is not even seen by anyone. It's invisible. It's under the ground. But without it, no building can stand. The floors, the upper stories, they can be beautiful, cosmetically so, designed, people live in them, but it's the foundation that holds it up. Malchut is compared to that. The Zohar says, a classic work of mysticism, Jewish mysticism, that Malchus, like the moon, has nothing of its own, no light of its own. But in turn, because it suspends itself, suspends itself, it, tra- it channels and transmits all, all the energy. Because as great as you are, you're as great as you can be. But when you have that type of selflessness where you can become a transparent channel, you can channel anything, even eternity itself. That's the power of Rachel. So it was a sacrifice to be buried in a place all alone, but she wants to cry for her children, that wherever they will be, they will know there's a mother that watches over them. So one of the most important things in life is having those healthy attachments, the nurturing, becoming more and more apparent, more popular, if you wish, in psychology today, attachment, the connections we have from the earliest stages of our formative years, the nine months we spend in our mother's womb, the early years when we're nurtured and protected and watched over. And God forbid when a child is deprived of that, we know the consequences. They're not simple. So where does attachment come from? It comes from a mother that cares. A mother that's ready to say, yes, it might not always be in my own comfort zone. It may not always be convenient, but I'm here for my child. Rachel did this thousands of years ago, and we talk about her today. And it's interesting. As we stand in these holy days, between Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, going into Sukkot, these are days that teach us the secret of eternity. And eternity is all about that, being able to give. The greatest empires, the greatest forces, the greatest egos in history, and the time they lived, they were extremely powerful, formidable. People trembled before them. But what happened after they were gone? We barely remember them. Yes, they're part of a book. They're part of a history book. But their legacy, children, grandchildren that talk about them with love. And here we have Rachel, very humble woman, very quiet in many ways. But that love that burned inside of her, both in her dedication to her husband Jacob, dedication giving birth to children, and it came at a price, was not easy. And she dies after, in childbirth, after a sunken boy, is bo- Benjamin is born. And then, forever, being etched in our annals as the mother that watches over her children. It's a lesson to be learned for all of us, not just women, but men as well. Even though it is women that are blessed with the ability to carry a child. I mean, one's hearing from a little girl telling her mother, her pregnant mother, she says, Mommy, how do you have room inside yourself for someone else, for a child? And I thought to myself, you know, men don't really have, barely have room for someone outside of themselves, let alone inside themselves. It's something. So the physiological structure is due to an emotional one, the ability to create space for another. And that's not giving away something. It's making you far greater. And as a result, we have what we call eternity. Because born by the ego... You die by the ego. You rise with your own self-expression and you fall with your own self-expression. But when you're able to go and become nothing of my own, like the moon, you then reflect, more than reflect, you create, you generate an energy that's far greater than any giving energy. The power to absorb, the power to encompass, the power to embrace. And that's the story of Rachel. And the lesson, I mean, is 
tells, tells, speaks volumes, especially in today's day and age, where love is seen as yet another need. You know, you give, I'll give you in return. It's a negotiation. Remember once asking someone, you know, you understand the concept of unconditional love? And he said, yes. If she, my wife, did A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I would give her unconditional love. Next question. Do you have any blind spots? Yes, but I know what they are. So today we need this more than ever, the capacity to love. And this is between spouses, but also between parents and children. Your little child. To embrace them unconditionally and not say, come back later, I don't have time. That ability to get, get yourself out of the way and allow something greater to emerge, to cry for our children and cry for them in, in, with joy and with tears, to care, to care, the empathy of caring. So as we approach the holiest day of the year, as we show our care for others, that's how it will be shown to us. At the end of the day, it is a mirror image. And Rachel has much to teach us about what love is, that ultimately love is selfless. As Rabbi Schneir Zaman in the book of Tanya, in the chapter on love, called chapter Lev, in Hebrew Lev is heart, can be pronounced as love. Chapter 32 is the two Hebrew letters, Lamed Beis, Lev, love. He talks about what is love, he says, the dominance of spirit over matter. As long as you make the body and the physical more important than the spiritual, you never can truly love. Love is about transcendence, the transcendence from without, to be able to expand your horizons, to grow, not just another extension of yourself and your needs, but actually to be able to see something that you would not have seen on your own, to care about someone that's beyond caring about yourself, and the process of becoming a far greater person. And as we absorb something greater than us, we become an extension. If it's eternity itself, Infinity and self, we become an expression of that eternal. May you be blessed with that capacity, the tremendous capacity of emptying ourselves at times, suspending ourselves, not annihilating ourselves, suspending ourselves to be able to channel things that are greater than ourselves, the essence of love, and be the selfless lover as Rachel was, and in, t- and in turn be remembered forever and ever, and to remember our children, the defenseless ones, the ones that are vulnerable, that need our protection, that need our care, that need our love, and how much that shapes the future of their lives. Be blessed with a very healthy and sweet year. Please love to hear your feedback, your thoughts, your comments, and of course, share. May we all be blessed, may you be blessed, and your family's blessed with only health, success, abundance, materially and spiritually, and with the deepest capacity to love and continue to love and be loved. Thank you so much. This is Simon Jacobson, Meaningful Life Center, MeaningfulLife.com, where you could find this and many other programs. Please, as I said, share it, and please, I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you. Be blessed. Shana Tova, Gemar Tov, and for a blessed and healthy year, a year of personal and global redemption.